And here at home, FEMA has Ohio Task Force 1 on standby after the collapse, ready to help in the search and rescue efforts. 2 News reporter Madeline Ashley live at Task Force 1 headquarters to explain how the team is preparing for deployment. Brooke, Adam, I am standing here at the Ohio Task Force One warehouse with program manager Evan Schumann. Evan, thank you for taking the time to talk. So, Evan, would you mind discussing with me some of the ways you guys are preparing if you have to head down to Miami? Well, as I said, uh, we were put on alert, which meant we had to roster uh, all of our vehicles, put all the cash in, get everything squared away with them, and then roster the team and all the personnel. And so right now we're in a waiting mode. Uh, if FEMA says uh, you're activated, head to Florida, then we'll put out uh, an alert to all the rostered people to assemble here at the warehouse. And within four hours of that activation order, we'll be loaded into the vehicles and headed down Interstate 75. And some of these people have been trapped for over 24 hours, like we discussed earlier. And what's the survival rate look like for, for people down there still? Typically in this type of an environment, if you survive the collapse, which was pretty traumatic, uh, three days is kind of the tipping point where the survivability starts to drop off and typically somewhere around six to seven days it kind of bottoms out and after that uh, things start to transition into more of a recovery mode. However, uh, some of the task forces that went to Haiti for that earthquake, they were still finding people alive as much as seven to 12 days after the earthquake. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely still some hope. Well, Evan, thank you so much for taking the time again to talk with us. And uh, we'll be back at 6 to ask Evan some more questions about what goes into planning. But for now, live in Dayton, Madeline Ashley, 5 on 2.